us insane for the Lord. Hallelujah. Take me as I am. Hallelujah. We give God praise as we begin to prepare our hearts and our mind for the word of God. Amen. Because it certainly ain't my time. But I'm excited to receive and be able to eat from the mother. Amen. She is certainly the mother of this house. Amen. And she mothers well. She beats, she corrects, she does what she had to do. Like a mother. Amen. She gets us in line. Amen. So it's a treat. Ah, hallelujah. When our own leadership can come and feed us and give us what the Lord has given unto her. Amen. So we can make it through the week. Amen. The word is necessary. I said through the week. Hey, you got to revisit it to go on through this life. But I need the right now word. Oh my God. That is going to get me right and help me along the week. Amen. So we praise God for our leadership. Amen. Who God has called, who has certainly equipped for this. Amen. I can see it clearly. You asked me years ago what she's called to be a pastor. I don't know, but that ain't my position. But I can tell you now she's on fire for the Lord. And I'm certain that God called her and he equipped her for this job that is not easy. Amen. We praise God for our leader. Amen. Pastor Shanisha Chapman, y'all receive our leadership of this house by the word of amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Again, I praise God for the praise and worship. I praise God for the prayer on today. Let us bow our heads real quick. Lord, speak because thy servant hears you, Lord Jesus. Lord, as I decrease, Lord, give me a word for your people on today and allow them to receive it and to receive it in their hearts, not just in their minds, and allow them to accept it and apply it to their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. I thank you, Lord, and I love you. Amen. And amen again. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad to be here this Sunday morning. I cannot wait to get this out. I got to go right into it, okay? We got a, a, a service where we got communion too, and that's gonna take about 10, 15 minutes as well. So I'm going to get right into the word, but I promise you, if you lean over and hear what the spirit is saying today, it's going to bless you because it blessed me. That's my grandson in the background. I praise God for the praise and worship team. Praise God. They worked together and gave us the, the, the praise on today. My God, you had to get in it because when you hear the babies cry out, whew, let me say it again. When you hear the babies cry out, praise God. Okay. Praise God. Because certainly the devil desires to have our children at a very young age, a very young age. And we saying, say, no, you can't have them. Praise God. Amen. So let's get right into the word. Um, I know that in the, um, the, the shout out, I put Luke uh, to 22nd and the 23rd chapter, right? And I want to change that. And um, Sister Jay is on a road, so you may not see scripture in there and uh, all of that. But listen, if you listen carefully and just write it down, I'll take my time today, if that's all right with you. Luke, the 22nd chapter and the 23rd chapter and the 24th chapter. We're not going to do that this time, not at this time, but I'm going to encourage you for this week as we make it to Bible study and then good Friday night service, right? I want to encourage you to go ahead, read Luke 23, 24, so 22, 23, and 24, okay? I'm going to take little snippets out of them, okay? I'm going to read two scriptures. And then when I do, I'm going to just talk out the rest, okay? I, we don't have time to go through all of it. But certainly it's going to be in the word. And I have given you the chapters that you can read on a week to go ahead and glorify God all week. Praise God. All right, so we're going to start. The scriptures that we're going to go through today, I'm going to come from Luke, the 22nd chapter, 31 through 34. Luke 22, 31 through 34. The second scripture I'm going to read is going to be taken from Luke, the 22nd chapter, 54 through 62. Luke 22, verse 54 through 62. 62 praise God. Uh, Minister Doctor put it in the chat for you guys. Praise God. So you can get it off of there. Listen, it's crunch time. It's crunch time. And in that last hour is my subject. In that last hour. Okay. I want to talk about some things because listen, in that last hour, you ever meet somebody or have a relationship with somebody and 
you guys are great. You're working together. You're doing things. But sometimes in the crunch time, ah, what happened? Where were you? We're going to talk about in that last hour. Let's go ahead and read some scripture. Because let me tell you something about Luke. I wanted to read it from the book of Luke. It is in, is in, the, in the Gospels, correct? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But Luke, when Luke tells the story, Luke tells it as a witness, right? He, he's asked people over and over again, what happened? What happened? And then he recorded that thing. So Matthew will tell the story because Matthew was there, right? But Luke said, I need a witness. Somebody come talk to me. So I'm going to tell you from Luke, and I think that's an extra layer of strength. For the word of God. Amen. Now he was there. Matthew was there. And Luke said, hey, I want to know about it. And then they told the story and Matthew wrote it. And then Luke heard from a witness and wrote it. And it was the same story. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. So I'm going to tell it from where Luke wrote it. Okay. Luke 22. We're going to read 31 through 34. Let me read it for your hearing. And the Lord said, and let me set it up. And I'm in the King James Version. Okay. This is at a time, right, where they don't already walked for three and a half years with Jesus. Jesus has chosen his 12. He's gained a lot of followers. He's got a following like no other. People are running everywhere from to and fro to be healed and delivered and set free by Jesus, right? And they're trying to get to him and he's trying to take his time with the thing because that's not what he came for. That was just the extra, that was the overflow, okay? So what he came to do is to die for the sins of the world. He left on high, came down low and said, I gotta walk this walk real quick. I gotta show these people how to treat God. I gotta show these people how I want them to walk, how I want them to move, how I want them to live. And so he gained some disciples and he taught them firsthand. He taught them firsthand what it is they needed to do, how it was they needed to pray, what it is they needed to do to love their neighbor, what it is to love your enemy. So he sat three and a half years, walked the earth as far as he could, and then he taught his disciples. And now they find themselves in that last hour. They find themselves, hey, let me take, take two of y'all. Y'all go find this man and you tell him we need a space to have the last supper. We're going to need his upper room. So they go and they tell the man, they say, hey, we need this space if you, if you don't mind. Because we're going to have our last supper up there. The man said, come on. So they're up in the upper room and Jesus is, is, is doing that last thing in the last hour. He's setting the stage and he said, hey. You know, this is where he said, so one of y'all gonna betray me. They wondering who in the world is gonna betray our master. And he's saying the one that dipped in the cup the same time as me. And I'd be doggone, I wouldn't have dipped in that cup if you paid me to, but he did it. He dipped in the cup. And so I, I, that, ain't the, that ain't the story. That ain't the story. At the same time, he's in the upper room and he says in verse 31, that's where we are right now. And the Lord said, he's setting the stage. He's letting it go. He says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as we. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, when your heart is right, Peter, when you really get it together, I know you follow me. I know you walk with me. I know you've eaten with me. But when your heart is right, strengthen your brethren. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both in prison and to death. Lord, I would die for you. What are you talking about? How, why would you pray that prayer like that? Why would you say that to me? I don't cut this soldier ear off for you and you put it back on. There's nothing I wouldn't do for you. I'm ready to die for you, Lord. And he said, I tell thee, Peter. The cock shall not crow this day, this same day, before that thou shalt thrice, three times, deny me, deny that thou knowest me. Praise God. Praise God. Now let's go to 22, 54 through 62, because I want y'all to see what happened, all right? So I, I, I imagine if the Lord told me that and I'm sitting there listening to the Lord tell me, 
then I'm going to deny him and I'm ready to go for battle. I'm ready to go for battle. I know who I am. I know how I'm built, right? I'm ready. And here come verse 54. They done took Jesus now. Judas done, done did his job. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's in the darkest hour right now. It's in the last hour, right? And so here comes Peter. Here they go. It says in 54, then they took him and led him and brought him into the high priest's house. And Peter followed afar off. That means Peter was somewhere in the cut watching what they were doing to the master. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and were set down together, Peter sat down among some people. He sat down among them. A certain maid beheld him as he sat by the fire. This is what you call a snitch right here. She's sitting down looking at Peter like, I know you, and earnestly looked upon him and said, this man was also with him. And he denied him. Peter said, uh-uh, saying, woman, I know him not. Just that last hour. And after a little while, another saw him and said, thou art also of them. And Peter said, man, I am not. And about the space of one hour later, one hour later, oh, Lord, have mercy. After another confidently affirmed, uh-huh, yes, mm -hmm, it's you, saying of a true fellow also was with, was with him, for he is a Galilean. I know he was with him. He's a Galilean, and I know him, and he followed Jesus, right? He got the receipts. He gave a report. And Peter said, man, I know not what thou said. Um, and immediately. While he yet spake, the cock crew. I imagine Peter heard that thing and the Lord turned because Peter wasn't the only one that heard it. And the Lord turned and looked upon Peter and Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said unto him, before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. I'm going to stop right there with the reading of God's word. Let me tell you something. It's always in that last hour. When somebody needs you the most, we start to backtrack. Where are we going? When I need you in that last hour, when I need you to get out your comfort zone and go to battle like you said you could right? I need you to be uncomfortable. I need you in that last minute where something is going wrong, where something's changed or took a left turn. Where are you at at that time? I saw you, you're sitting there, you eating at my table. We eating real good when I bring the money home or when things are fine, when the bills are paid, when you're not sick. And I, you know, and I remember when you were sick, I came for you. I fed you some soup. I wiped your forehead. I gave you a cold rag. And now it's your turn. And I know you built for it. I know you built for it. But, but guess what? In that last hour, that's when I need you. And I don't know how to explain this no better than to give you an example of what that looks like. Because in 23 and 24, you'll see where Jesus himself, he was getting tossed to and fro from Pilate to Herod. Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. I know what y'all saying about him, but who is this guy? He ain't done nothing wrong. Oh, and then he heard somebody say, well, maybe he's a, a Galilean. Maybe he's a something. And he says, oh, we'll send him to Herod. They take him to Herod. Herod is asking. Herod was excited to see Jesus. Herod had never seen Jesus do one of these miracles they was talking about. He ain't never seen him heal. So he was excited. He kept asking Jesus questions, and Jesus ain't say a word. Why didn't he say a word, Master? Why didn't you say anything? He said, because the time is at hand. This is the last hour. I got to pay attention and stay focused as to why I am here in the first place. 
So in that last hour, even though I could have showed Herod my hand, I could have showed him what I can do. He said, I can't say a mumbling word because I need power to be in darkness at this time. I need darkness to think that it's winning at this time. So I must shut up and suffer a little while. So see, in that last hour, he did what he had to do. He was built for it and he came just for it, right? So what he did was he didn't say a word. Herod was disappointed and said, hey, I don't know nothing about this guy anyway. He ain't do nothing wrong to me. So send him back to Pilate. Pilate said, man, I washed my hands of this, but it was customary for them to let somebody go. Pilate said, I'm just going to beat him for y'all and release him to you. The people said, that's not enough. We don't want you to release him. We want Barabbas. We want you to give us the murderer. We want you to give us the one that was tearing up the town and murdering people. Just, just let him go. And I want him to suffer. I want Christ to go down today. The whole crowd is like, kill him, crucify him. And Jesus is standing like, okay, this is the time. Didn't say a word. This is that time. And he showed up big. No, somebody would have looked for him to do a miracle because they mocked him. They said, if you that guy, then this ain't got to happen. And he, they didn't understand what the spirit was saying at the time. I need you to lean over and listen to what the spirit is saying. All power was in his hand. Not nothing was missing. And he's decided to say, let me lay that down for a second because I need you to show up in your ways. I need you to show how you show up so that I can do what I do. So the glory of God can be seen in this whole world. And so at the end of the day, what he did was he just didn't say nothing. And Pilate said, okay, he had to release Barabbas. Pilate wanted to wash his hands, but actually it was Pilate's decree. It was Pilate's word. And so they had to drag Jesus to Calvary. As they dragging him, Peter is crying tears. Peter is like, my savior, my master was right. I missed my opportunity to show up in the last hour, I missed it. And so Peter is now weeping like my savior is going to the cross and they carry him and they have another, another Simon who is helping carry it to the cross, carry the cross with Jesus all the way. And so when they put him up there, even still, Jesus said, hey, father, forgive them. This ain't about that right now. Forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know this is the last hour. They don't know this time has come. Allow it to be so, Father. The same man that was in the garden saying, Lord, please remove this cup from me. You see, in that last hour, there's pressure. I there's, there's things going on that you don't want to endure. There's a storm out here that we don't want to pass through. There's a trial. There's a tribulation that we just don't want to endure. But we have to, we know it's a must, and we got to keep our eyes on the prize. We got to understand it's a must. It is necessary for me to go through it. And it is also necessary that when I need you, you come through for me in that last hour. Praise God. And so Jesus took, had to still take care of some things. He had to suffer everything to be so. So even the thief on the cross, one is saying, Lord, if you, if you that guy, get down from here. If you are who you say you is, get down from here. Jesus, stay focused. I got to suffer this thing. You have no idea who I am. You have no idea. And the other thief said, Jesus, all I need you to do is remember me in that kingdom. When you get your kingdom, please remember me. Jesus took a time out. He paused for a second. And he said, this day, the same day, you're going to be with me in paradise. He took that second. And then, and then went back, resumed the suffering, handling his business. And then when they killed him, when he said it is finished, when he gave up the ghost, he went and got the keys to hell and death. what you say? I said he went and took the keys from hell and from death. For who? For you and for me. He went down. He took the keys. Hey, guess what? The job still ain't done. It's still the last hour. The job still ain't done. I don't set my people free. They gonna go back with me. And let me tell you something. Now that I'm, uh, uh, they think that I'm dead and gone. I don't took my keys and it's time for me to get up. By the power of God, Jesus got up. 
and he had to do it on his own and he suffered it to be so. And then when it was that time though, for those that needed to come through, for those that could have helped him or stopped it or just said, hey, I'm with him. Wherever he go, I go. Whatever he do, I'm going to do. When Peter said, hey, I'm going to die for you, he meant that thing. I promise you he meant it. But in that last hour, I need us to be conscious of what's going on around us or what the devil's trying to do. He says Satan is trying to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed that your faith fail you not. And it wasn't the faith of denying him. It was the faith that he was going to need after he denied him. Oh, man, I done messed up. He could have stayed right there. But guess what? He did not. Peter went on to be one of the baddest apostles you'll ever see. One of the bishops. You understand? He went down in history and was crucified for his savior upside down. So Peter was a bad man because his heart was right. Praise God. So sometimes we got to remember, Peter, Peter knew it. I'm sure Peter knew it. We got to remember in that last hour, somebody needs you to show up. Somebody needs you to be uncomfortable. Somebody needs you to just walk alongside of them. And in that last hour, we must, as a people of God, as a people with power, as a people that carry God's anointing, we got to show up. Not only do we got to show up, we got to show up and show out. What do show out look like? You ain't got to say a mumbling word. You only got to show up. You only got to stay focused. You only got to do what God called you to do. And that's it. And that's all I have for you today. Praise God. Oh, amen. Hallelujah. I give God praise for the word on this morning. Amen. And so she came with the story. Amen. And uh, what I like that she pointed out, I said, you ain't got to say a mumbling word. You ain't got to say nothing. And that's one of the biggest things that we as the people of God struggle with. But when you begin to get mature and you understand what God called you to, uh, you walk in it just like Jesus did. Jesus walked in and say a mumbling word, amen. And she, that's an untimed word, amen, for what God is about to do with his people. We got to learn ah, to just stay focused and show up where God needs us to show up at that time, amen. So we praise God, amen, for the word on this morning. Hallelujah. We thank God for our leadership and for God using her on this morning. Amen. And so at this time, amen, uh, we are going to hand it over to our prophetess. Amen. As she brings us into uh, the next part of this service. Amen. The altar call. Amen. Amen. We thank God for this morning. We thank God for the word. It was so beautiful. Amen. Ah, We got to pray on today that we have discernment in the last hour because God is certainly calling us to show up amen and we have to know which way to go listen to what god is saying amen because he told him he told him that satan want to sit you like we but out of fear peter did what peter wanted to do because peter was afraid amen so we got to pray for discernment and show up in the last hour amen we thank god for today we're, we're in prayer um the prayer call Right now, um, if anybody needs prayer, um, just put it in the chat. Uh, just put, just say it out loud. Whatever you want to do, Amen. If anybody, I'm, I'm waiting on you all, Amen. Good morning. I'm on the road. I just wanted to say I wanted um, a prayer for Sister Campbell. She's an elderly woman um, taking care of some children that I know. And I told her that I would ask for prayer for her this Sunday. Could you, could you say her name again one more time, please? Campbell. C A M B. Okay. Yeah. Campbell. That's well. Okay. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Amen. Uh, if you could just uh, call out prayer uh, just for the entire uh, body of Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just call out the people of God. Amen. Because God is getting ready to do some things. And so we certainly need all the prayer. Amen. So just call out the body of Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. We're going to get right into prayer for everybody. Hearts are clear. Amen. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come to you again, oh God, just thanking you because you're beautiful, God. You're wonderful. You're magnificent, oh God. We thank you on today for your peace on today, God. We thank you for the word that went forth, oh God, Lord, that, that pierced us, oh God, that awakened our eyes, oh God. Lord, we thank you for the message. Oh God, we thank you for all that you're getting ready to do in your people's lives, Lord. I'm here and in the world, oh God, we ask right now, Lord, that you bless your people on this line, oh God, right now, Lord, name by name, one by one, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you give your people strength on today, oh God. Lord, that they may be more like you, oh God. Lord, we ask right now, God, take each and everything that's not like you out of your people's lives in here, oh God, that's not like you, Lord, we ask that you heal them, oh God, their minds, Lord, their bodies, Lord, do a new thing in them, oh God, transform them, oh God, right now, God, your people are seeking you, Lord, uh, Lord, we don't know what their, their personal uh, agenda is, oh God, but you do, God, and we ask that you step in for them, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, keep your hands on your people, keep your shield and protection around each and every one one on here, oh God. Lord, continue to show your love, God. Continue to let them know that you are 